PGA Tour presents the 2002 World Golf Championships American Express Championship. Third of the fourth World Golf Championships teed off yesterday with the Tiger Woods, world number one in the field after a three week layoff and a question of how Woods would get started in this couple of uh, weeks in Europe and get started quite nicely as a matter of fact although he didn't drive the ball as well as we've seen Woods drive it in the past didn't take advantage of the par fives until the 17th that third shot set up this birdie which was the sixth on the afternoon for Tiger Woods a day when scoring was very good Tiger Woods play was exceptional at six under tied for the lead at that point one of the questions coming into the round with a new set of irons that he had not used in competition before how would Woods perform with those irons? Well, the number of birdies tell you that he put it not too far from the hole on a several different occasions, including that approach to the lengthy last hole, the 481-yard par four. And like David Toms and Steve Lowry before him, Woods had a birdie putt at the 18th to shoot 65 and equal the course record. They did not convert. He did. And Tiger Woods looking to win the American Express Championship for the second time in the three years that it's been played. With a bogey-free 65, Tiger Woods leads by one over Steve Lowry and David Toms, with five players, including Retief Goosen, just two shots behind. The beautiful estate, Mount Juliet golf course and the 1500 acre estate that has golf and horseback riding fishing some of the players have been taking part in and oh by the way a Jack Nicklaus designed golf course that is uh, kind of like a Parkland golf course you would find in the U.S. and by looks the leaderboard with so many Americans a half dozen in the top 10 after day one the American players have taken a good liking to Tiger Woods got off to another hot start in round two we pick up his round with his third at the par five fifth. He's going for a big high flop shot. The blade's wide open. <laughs> Unbelievable. Fantastic shot there from Tiger Woods at the fifth. Now Tiger for birdie. Not to be seen in the putting stats this season. Number one in three other categories, though. Total driving and greens and regulation, and of course, scoring average. Co leader now at eight under. At the seventh, and this is Tiger Woods for his birdie. Thus far. That would have gone in a thimble. A head to eight. This uh, four footer for a birdie. Yes. To ten. And Woods third, clear that tree, Billy Ray. You guys got a clean look at the flag stick. Only has 101 yards left. This third shot plays slightly down the hill, so just a three-quarter sandwich for Tiger. Irish fans are love their golf. Now Woods for his third birdie in five holes. Working back. There it goes. That's uh, three birdies on the three par fives today for Woods, who is the leader by one to 12. Tiger, 
pretty good lie out of the rough from 166 yards. A little nine iron. Needs to get down. <laughs> Needs to get down it's, from going in the hole. It's, it's almost laughable, isn't it, from what looks like to ordinary mortals. There you go. I just strikes the front. Ahead to 14 and Tiger to get to 13 under. Through 17, Woods leads Kelly by four shots with Lowry and Tom's five back. Tricky little pitch here. Oh, needed to land it on. Landed it just short. And that'll be a very difficult little putt. Now live at 17 green. Tiger had 65 yesterday. Six under today. If he knocks this in, would go to 14 under. And no blemishes. Really in control of his game. A couple of drives to the left, though, especially on the par fives. Maybe when he's just going at it a little bit harder than necessary. But this length putt he's been very good at. Stays very steady over it. Beautiful. Just poured it right in. 14 under par. Leads by two. This is Kelly at 18. Jerry for his finishing par. I mentioned Woods and Kelly played together in the uh, 2001 Players Championship. Jerry led after 54 holes, went on to the weekend, and uh, Woods ended up winning out. But that was kind of the week that put Jerry Kelly on the map from a confidence standpoint. Helped propel him to a couple of wins in 02. 65 today for Jerry. Good play. Hey, you might you might play with Tiger tomorrow. Does it help from the player's experience of 2001 and the confidence of winning a few times if you end up in the last group with Tiger? No, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, uh, we tend to do it at the right times, at least in the final group each time. So uh, I hope it turns out that way. I'm looking forward to it. All right, great playing. Good Thanks. luck, Jerry. Thanks, appreciate it. Jerry Kelly joining us after a round of 65. to 18. Tiger has 223 yards left. Little helping breeze. I gotta guess three iron. Well, the height that it came out, I'm pretty sure it might have been a four iron. Whatever it was, it was a great shot. Now Woods to close with a birdie. Up the hill, not much to it. So it will end with another seven birdie bogey free day. Same as yesterday. And Woods will lead by two over Kelly. He and Jerry will be in the last group tomorrow. Woods closes out the second round with a second straight 65 to lead by four over Jerry Kelly whose 12 under total has earned him a Saturday pairing with the world's number one. It's as big a golf event as Ireland has ever seen. World number one Tiger Woods leading a stellar field of golfers at a beautiful golf course on a perfect day. Record crowds on hand for the third round of the American Express Championship. As the World Golf Championships continue, Tiger Woods started the day in the lead by a couple, and here's how his day has gone so far. Just one birdie, that on the fifth. This was his third shot at the par five. And converted that short business for birdie. Woods, no missteps on his round through 43 holes, but Chris DeMarco's on his heels. 
As good a field as you can find. To the eighth and Woods for Eagle. He's certainly not going to three putter that, I'm sure. Sliding right. But it certainly makes uh, the birdie easy, doesn't it? A drive and an iron on a hole measuring 605 yards. Ahead to 10. Beautiful, just beautiful. You think he has all the shots? Straight up the hill for birdie. Cruising along on the par fives after struggling on the par fives on day one when Woods was one under par. Through 14, Woods leads Kelly by four with Goosen two holes ahead and five shots back. Tiger 132 and he will play this with a pitching wedge also. Smooth pitching wedge. Get up. Ah, uh, it's not going to get up. Everything today right at the hole. Right through the bag. And Tiger for yet another birdie. It's almost redundant to continue to say that. Fairways and greens, fairways and greens. He makes it look easy. Unbelievable crowds here. They were making some projections early in the week we thought they were high they may be low yeah anywhere from 30 to 35,000 here we didn't think it possible in these two lane country roads to get this many folks here <laughs> it just kind of didn't come back Last two putts he hit, he liked. Came up empty. Steve, just to finish our thought on when the pressure gets on on the weekend, what seems so easy on Thursday and Friday gets a little tougher. And when I sense somebody's has some pressure on him is when his speed of putts gets off. You can get it online, but the speed gets off. It affects your nerves. Center stage is a different uh, spot to perform. Yep. Interesting. Uh, Jerry, obviously, last name Kelly. The Kelly clan is from just south of here in Cork. His mother's uh, maiden name is McCann. And as he told the Irish press, there's no bad blood in me. <laughs> First time here for Jerry. Yes, it is. Having a great time. To 17. This is Retief Goosen putting for a birdie here. He's 13 under. Slow start. But he's birdied five of the last eight holes. To jump up into a tie for second at 14 under. The stream of people flowing down the 16th fairway as all these uh, 30,000 or so congregate around the final couple of holes here at the American Express Championship. Tiger Woods leads Vijay Singh by three. Scott McCarron, course record 64 today. Marco mediates a solid 67. All the players there on page one of the leaderboard, uh, members of the PGA Tour. Let's go back to Peter. That's the target they're aiming at. Tiger will head onto the green first. No, no. 180 yards back to the hole. Hole 30 paces deep in the green. From the fairway, you see just a little slope from back to front on this green. Tiger with a seven iron. Explosion of sand. It's almost as if he's hitting off those. Uh, Fairways you get in the desert. Boy, oh, really went down after that ball, Peter. He certainly did. There's a lot of sand on these fairways. 
Beautiful grass. Lovely shot again from Woods. He struck the ball very nicely today. He said yesterday in his press conference that there wasn't one shot that pleased him yesterday, but my old eyesight's detected at least half a dozen that I thought <laughs> were fantastic. But uh, obviously, he looks at it a different way. Now, Kelly. Well, that was a hard seven iron. I think this will just be a nice seven iron. 164. Oh, he has hit this uh, not quite the way I would have expected. Very low. Oh, oh, oh. Worked out. <laughs> Worked out. <laughs> Yep, that's OK. Well, it's a toss-up. Who's to play first? I'm not sure, Peter. Um, they are a similar distance. Jerry may go first. He's very animated when he strikes. He stays down normally long enough to make a good contact, but you rather like Helen Alfredson. As soon as the ball's on its way and the brain registers that the ball's been struck. He does tend to give it a bit of the old body twist occasionally, which is all interesting to watch. I don't know if you noticed the putter grip on Jerry Kelly's putter. The, there's a fella out here that makes them. There you see it. And most of the guys have their school colors and the name of their school on on the inside. Hey. They put the decal around the shaft and slip the uh, uh, clear uh, grip over it. Yep. A little hairspray over the decal after it's stuck on. I try to forget my school days. They were not the happiest days of my life. But that's another story for another day. You know, while Jerry looks, I will tell you that the crowds here um, have welcomed these two players at um, each and every hole. I'm Jerry just as much as Tiger Woods, but. Um, Interestingly, Tiger has been very gracious, um, raising his hand, tipping his cap more than once at each hole. Well, that's nice. That's why uh, people become supporters, and you're better to have them on your side than against you. I can never understand players who almost seem to go out of the way to antagonize spectators. You want them with you. Off he goes. He could. If it runs, it's it, it, it. <laughs> He nearly beat the ball to the hole, not quite. Good three. Good result. And Tiger, can he match Master Kelly's putt? This for a three. This to take him to four under for the day with the par five coming up. Players in this field think that's about even par for this golf course. Three under par. I mean, they think they ought to make a lot of birdies out here. Well, just tiptoed up to the hole. Wasn't really running at the hole. But another. Smoothly played hole. A couple of slight miscues early on in the round, but apart from that, everything's been struck pretty solidly right out of the middle of the bat. Let's go to 18. And Retief Goosen, his putt for solo second, could get you in the last group tomorrow. Back in the front left bunker with Tiger Woods here at 17. Should be his cup of tea, a little upslope, a good lie. Sound a little heavy. <laughs> he won't be too happy with that, will he? You're asking me? Yeah, what do you think? I wouldn't be happy with no. it. No, too simple. But you know, as we say it time and time again, there's no such thing as a simple shot. You still have to keep your focus and concentration. And sometimes you get so anxious because, boy, this thing, this might even go in, you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Return to the par five. And Jerry Kelly, see if he can get himself up and down here. Go to 15 under. 
Well, the uh, lay of the land went up and then down away from him. He took that first up out of the shot and uh, landed it on top. Should be interesting to see who putts here first. Dean, it looks like Tiger's away, but might stand right in Jerry's line. Mm -hmm. So exactly, be an advantage to uh, putt second right here. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Actually, Jerry Kelly is going to go first. Boy, that marker of Tiger's does look like it might be a little further away. I, I wouldn't well, mind betting that they've done that. Well, if, it's, if Tiger goes and he'd be standing right in Jerry's line, and he certainly doesn't want to do that, and plus Tiger would worry about it. So this is what the players do. Should feel certainly. a little bit to the right there. Yeah, it's certainly advantageous to putt second, but these players can read greens and this is just a little bit from left to right. No biggie. Putted well the last few holes this nine. <coughs> oh. Little less speed, I think, that would have taken the break. I should note, though, that Tiger Woods did stand relatively close and um, have a sharp eye on that putt. Huge advantage being able to see the line on a tricky little putt like this just ahead of you. It's almost like having a second putt. I think you, you're right. It confirms what you already know. Mm -hmm. You know, you know where it's going to break. You know the speed you want to hit it, but just to see it, you know. Don't you think that is what putting's all about, though? Having that really strong mind and that confirmation in your mind that, yeah, that's the line, go ahead. I think it's probably it's most all confidence. It. Yeah. yeah, most of it. 90% mental and the other 10% is all in your head. <laughs> now, Tiger. This is for his fourth birdie of the day, and he's had so many other opportunities. I know I say it a lot over this man, but just watch how steady he stays on this putt. The head won't move. The body doesn't move. The putter just swings through freely. Very nice putt. Not one of his better bunker shots. I'm sure he'll go and hit a few bunker shots this afternoon after he's finished. Now look at this. Just like a pendulum, it's got a crystal shaft and the pendulum of the old grandfather clock. Now, Jerry Kelly taps in for his par. This will remain at 14 under for him. But he's four back now. And the final group makes their way over to the final tee. At 18 under, Woods leads Kelly and Goosen by four as he looks to complete a third straight bogey-free round. Now Woods. It's just perfect for a little right to left shot. 212 yards to the hole. This is really pretty. For now birdie. Tiger for birdie. Yep, yep. Number five of the day. And a five shot lead. Hasn't made a bogey, really hasn't hit a bad shot in 54 holes. Some pull drivers, mm -hmm. 
bar, not horrible shots. Yep. But as far as iron shots, I can't think of any. And he's gotten right back in play and giving himself a chance on most every green. Kelly finishes two under 70 on the day. The 54 holes in the books. <laughs> and Tiger Woods leads by five. With 18 holes to play, Woods leads by five over a group of six players, including Vijay Singh and Retief Goosen. Scott McCarran, first in at 14 under, will be paired with Woods on Sunday. The first American Express Championship brought golf's best to Spain's spectacular Valderrama. Tiger Woods was pushed to a playoff, but outlasted a local favorite to light up this championship's opening act. One year later, the venue was the same, but it was Mike Weir who placed himself in position to win. The quirky 17th claimed most everyone who attempted to scale it. The lefty survived 17 and the last and was crowned champion in 2000. America was set to host this event in 2001 in St. Louis, starting September 13th. But September 11th brought a stark reality and a sudden stop to the game and to our lives. Though changed, we've moved forward, and 2002 brings this event to the Emerald Isle. An estate in Southeast Ireland has provided a perfect backdrop. Every player in the top 40 in the world rankings came to give it a try this week. The fans have come in record numbers to cheer a local hero, to check out the Americans preparing for the Ryder Cup, and to get a view of him with their own eyes. The Irish fans have been treated to a virtuoso performance, 54 holes, not one bogey. Today, Tiger goes for another title, and the country continues its love affair with the game and its best player. We join the final round of the 2002 WGC American Express Championship with leader Tiger Woods on the tee at the par 3 14th. It's 197 yards. Really a good, pretty par 3 with uh, several very clever hole locations available. You know, most people stare those down for about five minutes. 15. Billy Ray, David Tom, second here at 15. Oh, I beg your pardon. He is back at Jerry Kelly. And that is Tom's second and a very good one. Trying to make up the bogey at the last. Back to Tiger at 14. He's not made a bogey this week, and it would be wonderful to see him complete 72 holes without a bogey. This is to get to 25 under. Eight holes, 44 pars, 23 birdies, an eagle. No bogeys. 15. Tom's has been deadly on putts of this distance. And why not? The greens are just perfect. Probably yeah. make eight out of ten of those out here, as good as these greens are. And if your stroke's any good at all, you can actually miss hit it from that distance and make it. As long as you start it online. Mm -hmm. If you start it online, it'll go in. <laughs> Those of you who may have joined us late, let's show you some of the highlights of the day, including Sergio Garcia's 10 under par 62. Parred the first four holes, played the next 14 and 10 under. Second eagle of the week, this one at the par 5, 17th. Watch this third shot. By the day for Garcia, who moved himself into the top 10. Played with Nick Price, who was six under. There are two balls, 16 under par for the day. VJ Singh, a 
Also making a run at second place. Five under for his round today. Is at the par five tenth. So solid with fairway woods. We have seen him time and time again hit wonderful fairway woods. One I'll never forget is on the 11th hole at Muirfield, year one. Yep, on a Monday morning. Monday finished Memorial that year. It was the first shot out of the box on a cool morning. Scott McCarron in the last group with Tiger Woods. He and Woods, part of the group that came over early with Duval and O'Mara and played here before the British Open a couple of months ago. A little shaky start for Scott on the first, but got one right back with a birdie chip at the second. McCarron's 500 par for his day. Jerry Kelly, who was in the last group with Woods yesterday, started the day tied for second, but not in that last group because of such a big tie at second. He's playing very good as well. Six under par today. He has really turned into a solid player. Most of that is confidence in a few putts, but shots like that don't hurt either. Yeah, confidence from wins in Hawaii and outside Chicago earlier this year, and this has been about as uh, clinical as you can find for Tiger Woods right throughout the week. Not only has he not bogeyed a hole, has he really even come close to bogeying a hole? He's had five or six feet, maybe, a couple of times. I think twice is all I remember. All week. All week. This is 10. This is a par five. The par fives have been par fours all the way. And he bogeyed, or I'm sorry, in his mind he bogeyed the eighth because he made a par. So he comes back in the next par five, the 10th. That was his second shot, and as this for Eagle. Birdie at 14. It's the sixth eagle of the season for Woods. Now 25 under par. And here's Steve now. 15. Goosen to move into second by himself. Get in. Get in. You've seen a lot of putts made because the greens are perfect, but these guys really are rolling it well. We pick up the final round with Tiger Woods on the tee at 16. His lead over Atif Goosen is four shots with three holes to play. Same degree of concentration from day one. Fiddly a bit. The line is fine. Ratif Goosen at the 16th for a birdie. Hello, hello. Oh, oh. Well, is there going to be yet another twist in this story? We come back to the 18th and in the fairway, a guy who has been very well received here this week. Jerry Kelly, second shot. From 232 yards, Mike. Got a three iron. Coming Aiming well to the right, going to hit a hook. Like you, Did just that, Curtis. Going to land on the front of the green, Come it looks on. like. Played really well here, Billy Ray. He really did. You know what? As you mentioned, the fans really liked Jerry here, too. He just gave a clap to the fans as he entered the 18th green. That's the way Jerry does that as he walks on up towards the green, the last. And that putt for around a 64 for Jerry. We come back to 60. A huge crowd. Moving down, getting in position to watch the the final scenes. Yeah. McCarran and Woods. Deep green, a lot of deep greens here at Mount Juliet. The whole 34 paces deep in this green. 184 yards. 34 paces on, five in from the back right. Played with a seven iron. Looks good. Beautifully judged, flighted it well. Never in any danger. To 18. Here's what uh, Billy Ray was talking about a second ago. Jerry did that on the way up the last green, Milwaukee, uh, four years ago. But he played well in front of the home folks. Always to thank them for the warm reception. 
Looking down at the 16th green, McCarran and Woods, the final pair. Woods, it'll be to have a putt first for a birdie. I was watching the uh, local television the other morning and uh, Mark Frost, the author, was here uh, promoting his book, The Greatest Game Ever Played. It's a story of uh, Francis Wiemet and Harry Varden, Ted Ray, 1913, the playoff of the US Open and how it, in his opinion, kick-started golf in the United States. Well, this fellow here over the last few years, along with many others before him, is carrying on that wonderful tradition. Amazing the interest he's uh, created over the last short time he's been a professional before that an amateur but a remarkable man just look at the speed of that putt just beautifully all right a couple of inches short but never any danger never anything silly just cruising along Dead online. Only two holes left now. To 18. And at the par four. This is Jerry Kelly's birdie attempt. And Jerry will have that to finish it to 21 under. 17. Goosen's second shot here. You can see the trees on the right. He has to avoid those flags back right. Oh, beauty. Could be close in. Oh, good. Yeah, this slope. is ideal, huh? Look out. Now, Retief Goosen has that to get to 24 under par. Nine birdies so far in his round, just the one bogey at 11. So he's eight under in his round. To 18. And Jerry Kelly's putt for par. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wow. ooh. A little loss of concentration. You know, just played so well. You'd never seen miss a putt like that in the first 71 holes. Now cost him a little bit. Yeah, but it's usually disappointing. You hate to finish in front of what he thinks his hometown fans. These people loved him this week. Yep, the Irish love for Kelly, and Kelly's love the Irish here this week. 66, despite that three putt at the last. Now, this is a big putt. And he's a very good putter. Slightly uphill, maybe inside right. Yeah. How about that? Retief Goosen, 10 under par on his round today, an eagle there at 17, and now just one back of Tiger Woods. He'll go to the 18th with a chance of birdie and to make Tiger work a little harder there at the 17th. This is great stuff. Mm -hmm. Fellas, I can report that uh, Tiger stood on the hill and he and Steve Williams both looked back at Retief Goosen in the 18th fairway just before he played that shot. Um, he still has not had an opportunity to see the leaderboard. I have to think, Judy, that he knows, though, with all these people, they know what's going on. Yeah, this is a tricky shot to get really close. If he was only trying to knock it in there 15 feet, maybe not that bad, but he's got the bunker there on the right. Not such a great lie. perspective on that is is that's pretty good from that lie and that shot 15 feet could have got himself in some trouble 218 he figures he has to go right at it and he does by the shape of the club it looks like a five iron starting just right out of the hole and drawing back perfectly Only been two birdies here all day. Goosen will have a look at a potential third birdie. 
How about a birdie birdie eagle birdie finish? Back to 17. And Tiger getting set to putt, Mike. Two 62s on this round today. Sergio Garcia and Retief Goosen. This one for birdie to go to 26 under. Be a lot nicer going to that 18th tee with a two shot lead. something very special. Focus now on Retief Goosens. Caddy's going to dirty his knees there to get a really good look at this one. This not a tough putt. Just maybe tries to get off to his right. You don't want to try to read too much into it because it's pretty flat. <clears throat> this for around a 61 and to tie for the lead. Get in. <laughs> Weak part. Certainly thought he'd give it a little bolder run than that. Well, that. It's 62 or 62. Great play and great finish. And we did exactly what we said earlier, Mike. Just get out there, get a good round into your belt, make some birdies, and make Tiger work. 72nd hole of the 2002 American Express Championship. Quite a day. We've seen two of the top ten in the world. Sergio Garcia and Retief Goosen equal career best rounds on the European Tour. Sergio had one better in the States. But they both shot 62, a course record, to put a little pressure on Tiger, especially Retief. But Woods leads by two on 18-T. Come on, Tiger. Yeah. Well, it's the low cut, and it is right toward the big tree, but it'll sneak under and uh, should be fine. <laughs> yeah, once again, that's why you hit a two iron, Judy. The, the two iron all week long has been going under that tree. I know it wasn't a shot. He might be pictured in his mind, but better than going left. Woods missed one fairway yesterday and uh, just missed the 17th fairway a moment ago. Woods now. Well, it's a big shot, 235 yards all the way back to the hole. But if you were ever looking 25 or 30 feet, just short and right of the hole, it'll be right now. This is a four iron. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Come on. And I just put the camera down. You on the right, they just put it down. All right. It's right at that thing you tell it. It's a good high soft cut right over. Let it go right there. Steve say high soft cut at the TV tower. The TV tower is between the small grandstand on the left and the large one on the right. Well, it's a little more than a soft cut. Three from there for Woods, and he'll win by one. And you know why he's so upset? And I really don't blame him. First of all, photographer got him out of his routine, but he hadn't made a bogey all week. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
And he doesn't want to do it right here on the last hole. Lee Trevino, as mentioned earlier, last to do that. 72 holes in the same event without a bogey. Woods had a stretch at 110 holes. Bogey free. That spanned two events, but not one complete event. Fans lining the 18th fairway all along the right. The applause will build if Woods is able to uh, make it through this 18th with no worse than a bogey. He'll be 26 and two when entering the final round with a lead. Woods taking a peek at a similar area to where David Toms was about 25 minutes ago. A little farther back, a little more rough to carry, but uh, very little. Just I always thought this was a tough shot. You have a sand wedge or, or a 60 degree wedge, and you had so much green in which to work. That putt for one of the rarities in the game, a bogey-free 72-hole tournament. Kind of tough to beat a man like that. <laughs> so we watch Scotty for par. Good save. <laughs> Rolling sixth from the can. Should lock up that tour championship. Yep. Getting the spot in the uh, field in Atlanta. But it's fun to watch. I think Steve said it earlier. It almost looks monotonous or boring. But uh, it really uh, there's been a lot of work that goes into this golf swing. And of course he is who he is internally through his parents. But that golf swing there's been a lot of golf balls hit a lot of practice. A lot of Tom <laughs> Goosen and Tom's with a smile as uh, they watch as well. And watch Woods. Try to complete. The bogey free tournament. Oh. He will win by one. 71 bogey free holes, but still a sixth World Golf Championship of the 12 he's entered. Tiger Woods wins the 2002 American Express. Tiger, first of all, congratulations. Um, what a tremendous performance this week. Thank you. I really played well this week, and I had to. Um, speaking of had to, um, when you were on the 17th hole, at what point in the 17th hole did you know Retief Goosen had done something oh, um, to force on, your hand? We knew back on 16 what he had done. We knew the roar. We, we saw he was at 22 under. You knew that uh, that roar wasn't wasn't for VJ. It, it had to have been for Retief. And, because uh, you may have hit it close, but you, you just know that if the guy's making a run, it has to be him. Because uh, that roar should be just a little bit louder. And uh, we figured he, he made eagle there, and um, he stuffed it on 18. And I was reading my putt. Um, we didn't hear a you know huge huge roar on 18, so I knew that if I if I buried my putt, um, I'd have a two shot lead. Um, it has to be really, really satisfying to come to a golf tournament with the goal of winning and then to really be able to appreciate the way you accomplished it. 
Yeah, it is. You know, I, I absolutely had to play well. I mean, it, it was it's kind of scary how low these guys went this week. Uh, think about it. But just because the greens are so pure, you, you can hoop 20 footers left and right around this place. And uh, the, the golf course wasn't as dry and as fast as it was yesterday. It's a little softer today and you can be that much more aggressive because of it. I know that you knew this was a bogey-free experience uh, mm. playing the 18th hole. So I want to tell you that bogey-free golf is probably overrated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to make that putt just, just to kind of shove it on, the, you know, that guy who took that picture on 18, you know, yeah. th that really made me hot. And I, I never really got my focus back on that, that shot. I, I tried and I had the, the vision of hitting, you know, the high fade and then and uh, you know, never really got it back, and I blocked it over there, and I, I just really wanted to bury that putt just to spite him. Well, it's really unfortunate because so many people were so very, very happy to see you in Ireland this week, and you were very gracious with the crowds. I think it was a great experience both ways. Yeah, it was. I mean, I, I love coming over here. As you know, I come over before every British Open. Uh, and the people here are just so wonderful, so gracious, and so nice. And what made it cool is that they, they really understand the game of golf, and they appreciate a shot. You may hit it, you know, 20 or 30 feet, but, you know, it's a tough shot, and, and they give that type of applause. And it's always fun when you can play in front of fans, you know, that, that are knowledgeable about the game. Well, great playing. Um, it should uh, put you in great spirits for the Ryder Cup. Mm -hmm. We'll look forward to watching that. Uh, congratulations on great golf and the win. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Judy.